Have you ever wondered why at a time in history when we're more connected than ever before, we're also more lonely, anxious and depressed? That seems pretty counterintuitive, right? Well, there's one thing that is causing mental health conditions like social anxiety to skyrocket. In this video, I'll be revealing one thing that's causing this sharp increase in social anxiety, and I'll give you five powerful techniques that can change your life immediately. For those of you that are new to the channel, I'm Ed Barton. I struggled with crippling anxiety for my whole life, right up until my early 30s when I devised my own method to overcome it. I'm now a specialist anxiety coach and I've helped hundreds of people overcome anxiety disorders over the last seven years. I used to be a Zen monk in Japan and I'm also a keen Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and yoga practitioner and I bring all of these approaches of working with the body and the mind into my treatment of anxiety disorders. And if you're currently struggling with anxiety and you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me then please click the link in the description and you can book yourself a free roadmap call and we can discuss if if we'll be a good fit to work together. Right, so let's dive into this video and I'll reveal the one thing that is causing these increasing rates of social anxiety. And I wanna say that this is not just my own opinion, it's actually backed up by the opinion of a Harvard psychiatrist. So check this out. The one uniform thing that I think is responsible for the rise in social anxiety across our generation, starting with millennials, it is getting worse the deeper down we go, the younger we get, is the use of technology. So what started to happen is we've stopped relating to other people like in person. We do things like DM each other on Discord. And when we use online based communication, a lot of our empathic and social circuitry starts to rust. When human beings used to sit around, around a fire and like talk to each other 2000 years ago, there are all of these circuits in our brain that started to develop that measure tone, body language, facial expressions. And as those circuits develop, those things reassure us. As we move on to more online communication, those parts of our brain rust. Because if I'm DMing 15 people on Discord, I can't measure tone, I can't see body language. So those parts of our brain start to shut off in the same way that you forget a language if you don't use it. So for those of you that don't know, that's Dr. K from the Healthy Gamer YouTube channel, and he's a Harvard trained psychiatrist. And I completely agree with what he's saying. For those of you that watch this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I believe that a lot of the problems with anxiety disorders these days are related to our modern lifestyle. And I think this disconnect from using screen and not speaking to people in person is really a massive contributing factor to these massive rates of anxiety that we're seeing in our society today. As Dr. K says in that clip, if you keep going around taking the path of least resistance, and by that I mean just messaging people rather than picking up the phone and talking to them, or calling takeaway rather than going to the restaurant and getting your food, or using the self-checkout in the supermarket rather than speaking to a person, or using the screen in McDonald's to order your food rather than go and actually speak to someone behind the counter, these are all ways of just avoiding contact. They're a path of least resistance. It's a way of staying in our comfort zone. And as humans, we're programmed to want to reserve calories and we usually shy away from things that are going to be challenging. The problem is if you continue down this path of avoidance, as Dr. K says in the clip, parts of your brain are actually going to atrophy. The parts of your brain used for empathy and social connection will atrophy. And you can imagine a state in the future where everyone is locked in their own apartments behind their screens and communicating with another the human becomes something completely alien. And I really feel that we're not actually that far away from that kind of dystopian future right now. I always make a point of speaking to people in the elevator. I never use self-checkout. I always push myself every single day to speak to people and have human interaction because I know I'm a social primate. I know I am a mammal, which is wired for social connection. But I am in the minority. I see most people just locked into their phones, not making any effort to communicate. And this is really a dangerous path that we're heading down. And I think we all need to take action to reverse this trend. Okay then, so what can we do about it? Well, first of all, please stop taking the path of least resistance. Start taking the path of most resistance. This is how you grow areas of your brain. This is how you get stronger socially. This is how you get more connected and feel happier overall. So the way you do that is stop messaging people, pick up the phone, have face-to-face -face interactions, actually go and arrange to meet a friend in a coffee shop and speak face-to-face. -face. Stop deferring everything to easier online methods such as DMing or messaging online. Have actual conversations with actual people. As I say, when you go into the supermarket or when you go into McDonald's, don't use the self-checkout. Actually go and speak to a human being. This will exercise your brain. It will release feel-good chemicals in your body and make you feel connected and improve your overall well-being. Secondly, invest in creating offline relationships 
relationships. This means going to clubs, groups, activities, societies. You can go to Toastmasters, you can go to a board game club, you can go to any kind of association, but you need to invest in yourself. You need to make that effort. These things do not grow by themselves. Invest in creating offline relationships it's difficult at first, but you will feel better for it in the long run. Number three is take down your barriers to actually facilitate connection. Take off your sunglasses, unplug your ear pods, don't be glued to your screen all the time looking at your phone. If you get into an elevator and your head is down with a cap on and sunglasses and you're looking at your phone, there's no way anybody can open a conversation with you. So wherever you are, for example, when I get into the elevator in my condo building here, I take out my earphones, take off my sunglasses, and I open my body language to show that I'm ready for communication and I will always ask somebody because usually they're not going to start the conversation. I will just ask them, how are they doing? Even if it means them taking out their ear pods, which they often do. And their reaction when I actually do that is like, oh yeah, we're humans. That's normal to interact. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. And you have that kind of feedback from people. So people do instinctively know that it's right and normal to communicate, but we're heading down the wrong path with this lack of communication and everyone shutting themselves off. And it's causing this mental health crisis that we're seeing now. Number four, try and create some campfire time if you can. If you're in a family situation, try and have a time where you're all around the table together. My family was extremely dysfunctional, but one very healthy habit we had was that the family would always sit down together for dinner at the end of the day. No matter what had happened, the family would sit around the table and the TV would be off and we would actually have to talk to each other because my parents thought that there should be some actual face-to-face -face interaction because even back in those days in the 90s, we were running off to our rooms and looking at the TV. So there were screens there that we were trying to lose ourselves in as well. But if you're a family situation, try and create a time where you all sit together and have that round the circle, round the campfire type face-to-face -face interaction rather than all sitting in front of the TV eating or eating something in the kitchen or eating on the run. Try and cultivate that time where everybody is together. And even if you're not in a family situation, try and cultivate this time with your friends. Just get a time where three or four of you just get around the table in Starbucks and no phones allowed. You don't just take the easy option of losing yourself in your phone. You actually have to look at people. And that's why I coach so many people with eye contact problems because it's becoming a alien and foreign activity now for people to look at each other in the eye and have a normal conversation. We're forgetting all of these very basic social skills. And as Dr. K says in that video, these parts of our brain, which we used to use, which made this normal are atrophying. And that's why it's becoming such a big problem for so many people. Fifth and finally, this has kind of been touched upon in a previous point, but just pick up the phone and phone someone today. Instead of messing around on Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Line, or whatever messaging app that you use, just phone someone that you know needs a phone call or that you haven't spoken to for a long time and you maybe you've been messaging them instead. It might be a mother, a father, a family member, whoever it is, just stop text messaging someone and just give them a phone call and speak to them face to face. Because the more you do not do that, the more it's gonna be a problem. And that's why you see people these days with a lot of phobic reactions around using the phone, speaking on the phone, meeting face to face. It's not coincidental that we're not doing these things these days and it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem for people. You have to practice this stuff or these skills will rust. Okay, there you have it. I hope this stuff is of use to you. And as I say, please implement this. It will have a big impact on your life. Let's reverse this trend of social isolation, which is causing a mental health crisis across the world. And if you need help working one-on-one -on -one with me, then click that link in the description.